another day, another MatPat theory to watch and react to and give very smart commentary on. It's hard work being a React YouTuber on YouTube, but I try my best. There's a theory on who Ash is gonna marry, which I think is a crazy thing to make because Ash can't marry anyone considering he is perpetually 10 years old and it is illegal for a 10 year old to marry anyone in this day and age, thankfully. So let's see well, what he's got to say for himself. it's finally time to say goodbye. Wow, I, I, I can't really believe it. We've been through so much together, trying to figure out how old you are, who your father is, even what level Me. your Pikachu is. It's weird to think it's like that it's like <laughs> No, no, it can't be over. I know you finally achieved your dream, but I'm not ready to let you go. Hey, I'm sure we'll still Badge. be able to see each other. I mean, if anyone's gonna figure out a way to keep talking about me, it's gonna be you. you really that is a very close voice to the actual Sarah voice. I want. I was thinking for a second, did they get did they get Sarah to voice this? The actual voice actress? But no, it's not. It's not the voice actress. But it's very close. <laughs> Wait, what? 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 What is this? That, that's it. I know how I can keep theorizing about you. Well, whenever MatPat comes up with a theory, his eyes go the same size of someone on, that is on the hardest of like ecstasy. Well, that XKC. didn't take long at all. A hey, Pikachu. Hell. I'll say it is awesome how well edited the game theory videos are. This must take so long to make. I know they come out on a weekly basis and they have so many editors, but this is crazy. Even though it's a business at this point and they sold it to like a big business franchise where they get a, a ton of money and support now, but still, it is impressive that they put out these videos on a weekly basis. Hello, internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that knows that the truest of Pokemon masters are the ones that catch the subscribe button. Speaking of catching, oh boy, it's true. was I not ready to catch all the feet when Pokemon released their newest trailer. After nine regions, 52 This was badges, a really good video. Three Pokemon. I didn't react to this video, but I, actually I did. I reacted to this on stream. I never posted a video about it though, but this is a really, really good video. I, I like this a lot. 30 Tauros and 25 years of being 10 years old, Ash Ketchum is finally retiring as the protagonist of the Pokemon anime. Last year, Ash finally achieved his dream and became the Pokemon world champion at the end of Pokemon Ultimate Journeys, which meant that realistically, there really wasn't anything left for Ash to do as a character. He is literally the best, like no one ever was, but it's not. That is true. A lot of people want Ash to stay, but at this point, Ash's character arc is pretty much done. I mean, what's he gonna do? If he were to go back and just start and walk through another region again and just be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get all eight gym badges and challenge the league. It, it wouldn't have the same impacts because he's done it. He's become the league champion. He became the Alolan champion. Then he became the world champion, beat all the other champions. To go back to square one would feel very empty. It would feel like they've just thrown away all the journey and character development that he's made. So I think that it's a good time for them to kick him off to the, uh, put him out to pasture. Let him eat some grass. Uh, let him smoke some weed. Let him age. Let him do some drugs and party. Not like the anime can just end. That machine needs to keep on printing money. In other words, it needs some fresh blood, new faces, new heroes to learn the same lessons that Ash did along his journey. And in the latest trailer, we got exactly that. We were teased a new series set in the Peldea region from the newly released Pokemon Scarlet and Violet games. But instead of Ash, we get two new protagonists, Roy and Rico. Immediately, his after name the is Roy. This singular image. The fan. I'm sorry, Roy is a name that I would. Give give to like a 45 year old truck driver that is forklift certified and wants to go out to footy and then get a roast dinner afterwards. It's exploded with speculation about these characters. Roy is a weird name for a, Ash. They're an anime character. In the final episode of Ash's season, Ash is going to be their rival. But of all the speculation, one theory seemed to rise above the rest. That Rico, Kid. the new female protagonist, is going to be revealed as Ash's daughter. And this isn't just the fan base wildly speculating to keep Ash a part of the series. The evidence they saw is actually pretty compelling. First of all, Rico has black hair, at least partially, which obviously matches Ash's. Hair. How is it blue underneath? Is this is this a thing that you can do? Can you like make the underneath of your hair like a certain color, but the the top of your hair like not? Like, it seems like the back of the hair is is. Can you do that? But more is that importantly, thing? she's wearing a hair clip that bears a striking resemblance to the. You L can do that. That's Ash's sick. That's so cool. I don't know you can do that. Pokemon journey. Also, careful-eyed fans notice the necklace that she's wearing looks remarkably similar similar to the Thunderstone that Pikachu refused to evolve with back during the original Bro, okay, that- that is the biggest stretch of all time. First off, it doesn't really look like a Thunderstone. Secondly, why would he still- he wouldn't still have the Thunderstone. He Pikachu refused it like, what, 21 years ago? And even in universe time, it's gonna be a long, long, long time. There's no reason for him to carry it around when he knows it's not gonna evolve. That's kind of weird. Anime. Could it be that her pops, That's a reach. Ash Ketchum, gave her this memento as a symbol of overcoming struggles and not taking the easy way out? Even the name Rico has been yeah. pointed out by some to be a Maybe? Rika Matsumoto, the longtime Japanese voice actress for Ash. 
Ash. And the theories didn't stop there either. Once everyone was done pinning Ash as Rico's dad, the internet did what it loves to do, good old fashioned shipping. If Ash is the father, who then is the- I have always hated this. I don't like shipping characters that are 10 years old. I don't just, I don't really do a lot of character shipping in general, usually, especially in anime. I'm like, uh, sometimes if characters get together, I'm like, oh, okay, good, that's cool. But I'm not a huge fan of that. When it's a 10 year old, I'm, I'm fervently against it. This is weird. Imagine finding a 10 year old in real life of two 10 year olds and be like, oh, you guys should kiss. People would um, jail immediately. You'd go to jail in record time. You would speed run a prison. They wouldn't even do a trial. You wouldn't even deserve a trial. They put you in prison. Mother. So doing Each it for anime characters, just as great. Just as weird. Ideas to prove that their favorite companion was the true Mrs. Ketchum. But looking around, it seemed pretty clear that people were just being blinded by the waifu goggles rather than the cold hard facts of science. So you know what that means? It's time for me to break out the old paternity test. Ready your eye colors and earlobes, friends. We're settling this debate today. If Ash is truly the father of Rico, who is the mother? Let's start by figuring out our- All right, well, if I was gonna make a guess, I'm gonna say it's probably gonna be that Yin right there, Serena, because I haven't seen the anime, but I'm pretty sure there's like an implied kiss scene. It's implied, it's not actually shown, but it's implied. And there, it, they have, she has like, I guess she has like black eyes, but then the, the kid has blue eyes. So I don't know, maybe not. The, the hair color isn't the same. So maybe it doesn't even have to be a companion. Maybe it could be someone you just met on Tinder. Maybe you just met someone on Tinder, had like a one night stand, the kid's an accident, and then the, the mother runs away. So Ash has to raise the child by themselves. Maybe we have like a crazy uh, story like that. List of potential matches, shall we? If Ash is gonna be Rico's father, then it makes sense that her mother would be a character that we as fans are already familiar with. Admittedly, it, it could, could be anyone. just wind up being some random girl named Jennifer that we've never been introduced to before, but Jennifer on Tinder. pretty lame. So instead, we naturally turn to the Ash catch him reproduces many, by budding. Many female companions over the course. Do any of them have blue eyes? Only, only blue girl off to the right there has blue the eyes, right? To find his special romance. I compiled a comprehensive list of maybe mommies to find the perfect OTP for Ash and wound up with 15 candidates in total. Obvi I'm gonna throw up. I haven't heard o OTP since I think 2016. And even then it was Tumblr level of, ooh, that makes me feel uncomfortable. Don't like that. That's weird. We have uh, Misty from the original. It's like saying Bay. It's like Matt Pat coming on like, who is Ash's real true Bay? May from the Advanced Generation, Dawn from Diamond and Pearl, Iris from Black and White, Serena from XY, Lily, Mallow, and Lana from Sun and Moon, and Chloe from the newest Pokemon Journey series. But to be extra thorough here, I also tossed in a few long shots. These are one-off or side characters who showed some passing romantic interest in Ash during some point of the series. This list includes Melody from Pokemon the Movie 2000, as well as what? Macy Who? and Angie from Johto and Sinnoh, one-off characters that developed crushes on Ash, usually after he saved their lives. Hey, you two, you hanging in there? We're fine. Thank you, Ash. No problem. Glad you're fine. <sighs> <You're amazing. laughs> no problem. Glad you're okay. What? I want- I love you now! Yo, I'm falling in love with you! Oh, so caring. So you're a Pokemon trainer, huh? I guess he'll do. Here's your traditional welcome kiss. No, that's just the culture of the place. I don't think that Melody likes Ash at all. She's just French. <laughs> We also have Lyra from Diamond and Pearl and Miet from XY. Rival who? characters who outright tell Ash's female companion for each series that if they don't make a move on Ash, they're just gonna steal him away. I guess if we're all gonna spend the rest of our lives in here, we'll all get married here. I've got three choices. One thing. Either you tell- What? What do you mean three choices? What about- the wants of the men. What if they don't want to marry you? You act like you have the, the pick of the litter that you can just marry whoever you want, Lyra. You act like you're the craziest, amazing catch. What about what they want? What about their choice? Ash, how Do you they get a choice? Him, or I'll tell them how I feel. Don't say I didn't warn you. Finally, we of course have Latias. Yep, the Pokemon. If you're not familiar with this particular nugget of lore, at the end of the Pokemon Heroes um, Latios and Latias movie, the Pokemon Latias, in the form of a girl named Bianca, gives Ash a kiss. A move that shocks the whole gang, as well as everyone in the audience. And yeah, the Pokemon movies up to that point were considered canon. So, with our complete list of-
if Matt Pat ends this by saying that Ash fucked a Pokemon, I'm gonna I'm gonna end it all. Assemble, it's over. Or Fourteen and one Pokemon. Don't do it, it's Matt. It's time to use Don't our latest it. companion science no. to narrow down this list of ladies and find the mother. Let's start with eye color, shall we? We've discussed eye color plenty of times on this show, so to quickly summarize, every single person has two copies of each of their genes. One com Okay, to be fair, the chat made this point, and I think it's actually true. The blue eyes is a recessive gene, and I should know that because I have blue eyes and my my parents don't have blue eyes. I believe they both have brown eyes. Ginger is also res a recessive gene because my parents also are not both ginger. My aunt is ginger. It's really weird. The genes are all messed up in my family. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a blue-eyed woman that gives birth to a blue-eyed child, right? Comes from mom and one comes from dad. These genes come in different flavors called alleles. Dominant alleles are for No, I'm not adopted. My brother is the same and he's 10 years younger than me. Okay. Also, I have ginger hair in my family and blue eyes. They so shut up. Stronger and I'm not adopted. Shut up. Weaker, recessive alleled traits. When it comes to eye color, there are actually three possible alleles, brown, green, and blue. If you inherit a blue allele from your mom and a blue allele from your dad, well, congratulations, you got yourself blue eyes. Two brown alleles give you brown eyes, Yay. and two green give you green. Super simple. But what happens when you get two different alleles? Well, in the case of eye color, brown is gonna be the dominant gene, blue is recessive, and green is just somewhere in the middle. So if you get yourself one brown allele, it's gonna butt in like Jesse's Wobbuffet, means you're likely gonna have yourself brown eyes. If someone gets one green, green allele and one blue, they're gonna have green eyes because green is dominant over blue. The only so blue way is the to rarest. blue eyes is with two recessive blue alleles. Nope. I'm learning more about myself. I actually realized that bl having blue eyes and ginger hair is one of the rarest combinations on the Point planet. That, let's then apply it to Rico. Since I'm Rico rare. has blue eyes, I'm a shiny. we know for sure that she has two recessive blue alleles. Except that already presents us with a problem. Ash has brown eyes, just like his mom. Sure, Ash may have brown eyes and still pass on a recessive blue allele to his children, but it makes the odds of him having a blue-eyed child much, much lower. Now, while it's true that Rico's mother could also have herself a secret blue allele, it is much more likely if Ash is the father that the mom has to have blue eyes so she's guaranteed to pass that trait on. As such, we're gonna eliminate all the candidates who don't have blue eyes. That eliminates Iris, Lily, Mallow, Chloe, Angie, Miette, and Latias. Which, whew, I am glad <laughs> that we knocked Latias out right away because the idea of Pokemon and humans having romantic feelings for each other would definitely be, um, uncomfortable. Smash. Okay. No, that's that's canon. We already know this is canon. This is literally in the libraries. The heart wants what the heart wants. It's Mark, after all. Who am I to deny this man his happiness? The blue eye criteria also puts Macy in- Also, if a Pokemon is as conscious as a human and has all the same mental faculties as a human and looks like a human and physically is basically the same as a human and has the same mental age as a human, then why can't, why, why can't we- Misty on the bubble because their eye color is annoyingly inconsistent. Sometimes it's blue, sometimes it's green. On the wiki, Misty's eye color is actually labeled as Viridian, which is what does that mean? blue and green. So we're just gonna okay. put them both in the running for now. So with our potential mom list cut in half, it's time to look at our second favorite genetic Wait, they all have blue hair eyes? Color. Hair color is predominantly determined by the presence or absence of two pigments in your hair. Eumelanin, a black brown pigment, and pheomelanin, a yellowish red pigment. You can actually think of these two I've got so much pheomelanin. And you wouldn't down, believe. generate a whole different range of hair colors. If your hair contains high levels of eumelanin and lower levels of pheomelanin, then your hair is going to be a dark color such as black or brown. If your hair has low levels of eumelanin and high levels of pheomelanin, then your hair is going to be lighter like a blonde or a redhead. And in between those is just a whole other spectrum of color. Now, in the main image that we've seen for Rico, it's kind of hard to tell what her exact hair color is thanks to the lighting. However, looking at this just use Photoshop to the get the color. trailer, it makes it a lot clearer that her hair is black with blue underlight. That's the official term for highlights that are hidden. Oh, that's that's what it's called. Layer of hair. Now blue that's cool. is of I like course that. not a natural hair color in our world, but this is an anime. Weird color hair just kind of comes with the territory. So we're gonna have to make some assumptions about the genetics of non-natural colors. Since more hair colors are possible in the anime world, that most likely means that there just must be more pigments besides eumelanin and pheomelanin. Therefore, there are more dials that we can play with when deciding hair color. There's probably a dial for green hair, purple hair, and most importantly for us, blue hair. Since Rico Rico's hair is both black and blue, that means that the genes for both are gonna be- Wait, an underlight can't be a genetic trait though, surely?
surely. I mean, it's anime, so I guess it could be, but surely an underlight, that's not, that's just a dyed hair. That, that can't be a genetic trait that you're just born with. That, that'd be so weird. Max. If Ash is the father- It's anime hair, what am I questioning about? Meaning that we need ourselves a mom that has blue hair to contribute that half of the genes. My deepest condolences to all the Serena and Misty shippers out there, because there are only two girls left in our list that have both blue eyes and blue hair. Dawn from Diamond and Pearl, and Lana from Sun and Moon. Hey Dane, is Ash your boyfriend? Huh? Ash, no, no way! Hmm. Come on. If you had to <laughs> Damn, she shut that down immediately. That was kind of the popular girl at the table, like, oh, you think I would date him? <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah, it's, it's not her. It can't be her. Three, who would she it shut be? that down uh, immediately. I never thought of it. Lana is he your boyfriend? Uh, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not. So now that we've. Okay, that was a much more fierce shutdown. If I was Ash in that room right there, I would have been like, I would have been personally insulted. There is, there, there's a difference between saying, no, he's, he's not my boyfriend. That's, no, that's, that's crazy. And straight up saying, just screaming that you're not, I'm like, I'd be sitting here like, is there something wrong with me personally? Jesus. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, I that's great. I narrowed it down to two. I'll we need to find that. some Poor. feature to Poor distinguish Ash. between our two female finalists. How do we decide between Dawn and Lana? Well, normally I'd go to earlobes or face shape, but honestly, it isn't nearly that complicated. All we really need to do is take a closer look at their eyes. If you look at Dawn's eyes, there are three different visible colors, the whites of her eyes, known as the sclera, the blue irises, and her black pupils. Now take a look at Lana. Notice anything strange? Those eyes are insane. Yeah, th those, I've just realized how crazy those eyes look. They have a blue sclera and a white pupil, which makes her look somewhat her dead. Her sclera is non-existent. What's even weirder is the fact that her pupils aren't black, they're actually white. And this isn't just part that of the weird so redesign weird. that all the characters got for the Alola arc. Every other lead character has themselves normal eyes. And we know it's a genetic trait here because the only other characters- <laughs> Normal eyes is a bit of a stretch. Look ...are Lana's parents and her two little sisters, Harper and Sarah. It is a trait that is passed between generations. And when we Wait! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, so the kids have the blue, though the white pupils. Okay, that makes sense. That's fine. Why does the mom and the dad both have the same genetic trait? That would imply that they have the same genes, which would imply that they are from, at least very close, the same family. What is going on? Hmm, is that uh, so interesting? Rico, okay. That crucial family feature, meaning that Lana cannot be the mother. And so we come to the They're end from of the same tribe? Re oh, do they keep it within the tribe is what you're saying? Is they, oh no, we gotta keep it in the tribe, guys. Can't. Can't be breeding with anyone outside the tribe. Mm, sounds like a little bit of inbreeding Rico's to me. Rico's mother and Ash's true shipping partner is, in fact, Dawn from Diamond and Pearl. She's got I don't blue believe eyes you, to pass on the blue allele, blue hair to match with Rico's underlights, and actual pupils that her daughter can inherit. So, there you have it. Ash and Dawn together. That's crazy, because Dawn was always my favorite, like, Ash companion as well. So, I'm, I'm I mean, Unless if this has got to be a thing, then I'm down for it. Full story here. I did a what? lot of research for this episode, and the more I looked, the more I realized that the initial premise this entire online theory is based on is shakier than Grudon's earthquake. This whole time, we've been really, do you think so? That Ash is the father, but no, it just doesn't. I think that this is the more likely thing. Ash is the mentor. It doesn't necessarily need to be a familial relation for you to have like a mentorship or like a teaching kind of uh, a status on like a younger child, right? And, and you can have. Uh, mementos from your mentor that, that that mean a lot to you. You can keep that kind of stuff. So they don't have to be related by family. I think it's just that like a teacher sense. kind of thing. Let's start with the hair clip, shall we? Well, the design is undeniably a reference to Ash's iconic cap. It's a hair clip. It's not a paternity test. Rico is just as likely to have gotten that clip the same way Ash got his first or a ever fan. Cap. Yeah, a fan. Yeah, fan. to send in about a million postcards to win that hat. You know what else that hair clip looks like? The antenna of an orbital. Maybe that's who the real father is. Oh, it does. Yeah, it actually does. Accounting for taste, I suppose. And what about that Thunderstone necklace that supposedly came from the anime's original season? Well, it would make no, it's a not. Great story. That's a stretch. That Ash held on to that Thunderstone all these There's years. There's no way. Eventually gave it to his daughter as a symbol of how Pikachu and Ash got stronger through hard work. It would be a complete retcon of what we see happen in the story. And we Pokemon would never what retcon. Happens to that Thunderstone. It was originally featured all the way back in episode 14. And after Pikachu rejects it, the fate of the stone is left as an open mystery. However, it yeah, you does wouldn't keep it though. Finally show up again again in episode 540 what? during the Diamond and Pearl arc. In this episode, Ash reveals that he's- Did he watch every episode of Pokemon just to find a Thunderstone again? <laughs> stone the entire time. What's that? It's a Thunderstone. Huh? You see, Why would you keep that? Something like this happened once. 
And back then, the Nurse Joy from Vermilion City gave it to me. Why do they have fungus stones on deck? This time, in case Pikachu ever wanted to evolve into Raichu. In the or just purchase Amazon Prime another one. You don't have to keep it in your bag the whole time. So <laughs> the pair has to face off against another strong Raichu, meaning Ash and Pikachu must once again contemplate whether or not to use the stone to evolve. I it's love the same that story. It's not just enough to recycle the same plot theme, but even doing it against the same Pokemon. Like, why not a Dragon Pokemon or a God Pokemon or something? Nope, those darn Raichu just always cause they're me so to have strong. That real existential crisis. Anyway, as you can probably guess, they decide not to evolve Pikachu again. But this time, there's a twist. Team Rocket shows up, steals the Thunderstone, and at the end of the episode, reveal that they plan on selling it. Hey, Sunshine, what about Finally, it? Jesus. Since Pursuit can be expensive, let's sell it. Plus, we all can it online, so we all be rich. That's what I was saying. Just put it on eBay, In man. short, the Thunderstone is long gone before Ash ever thinks about having kids. And before you say it, no, Rico is not the child of Team Rocket. Trust me, I checked. Even the genetics are against you Ash. Sure, how did Ash you check? Have a recessive. How did you check, Matt Pat? How did you? How do you know? What, what was the? What was the research? How? Did you ask them? Real, but that's a big if. And the whole black hair thing, characters with black hair and blue eyes. And this DNA test, perhaps? Dozen. Just take Go from Journeys or even Riley from Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. For completeness, I also ran an analysis on their faces and found that, again, the likelihood of it being Ash was minimal. If you watch the episode where I revealed that Bo Burnham is secretly Dream's father, you'll know that face shape can be a big tell in genetics. What? So I found the best shots of all the characters facing forwards, did some pixel measurements, put them into an online face. What is happening on the results? Did I miss surprised. something or do we just go off the deep end? ended up having the same or very similar ratios. Basically, all of them were categorized as a heart-shaped face. Rico also has a heart-shaped face, so it doesn't really help what me. What is going on? Face. Now, scientifically speaking, daughters are supposed to get that's why I, that's one of the reasons I actually really like game theory. People be like, oh, game theory, uh, no, you don't take game theory seriously. Game theory sucks because it's not actually a proper theory. Game theory is just for fun. It's just for funsies. It's it's about overanalyzing and overthinking things for little funsies. And I like doing that. I, I love this. That's why I like it. I think it's great. Face shapes. And while Ash's measurements do lead to a heart-shaped face, all his other proportions are too big to match with Rico's. His jaw is much longer, his cheeks are wider, and his forehead is far too bulbous. Or couldn't help myself on that one. All of so like Jeremy Kyle would once say, you're not the father. With any of the companions on the show in order to produce a daughter with the face shape of Rico. The science just doesn't add up. I don't think Rico's parents are going to end up having some significant lore implication. And you know what? I am more than happy with that. Well, yeah, it'd be cool to see. When have parents ever mattered ever in Pokemon? When have parents ever done anything of any kind of consequence? Never. Pokemon is a story of... It doesn't matter if you have good parents or bad parents. You can do all this regardless, the basically. Of the legendary Ash Ketchum go on her own journey to become a Pokemon master like her father. I also think it would kind of defeat the purpose of bringing in a new protagonist in the first place. Pokemon is a story True. about how anyone can rise to greatness through hard work and determination. Ash started off as a derpy screw up from a small town in the middle of nowhere. He had good intentions and a great heart, but not a lot of skill. Honestly, he still doesn't have a lot of skill. Using Thunder Shock for everything does not a strategy make but he has matured he's hey that's that's not very nice mad pad that just because he can't beat wolfie vgc in a fight he's still the world champion okay he's, he's still he's still the tippity top of the, the pops he's grown he's gone through more than his fair share of failures and now he's achieved his childhood dream to just hand the torchic off to his daughter is falling into the trap that so many other franchises have fallen into recently that you well like naruto and boruto I know exactly what he's talking about. I actually do think that having a follow-up anime series just with the child of the character that you had before is kind of dumb. I think that if you're going to make a sequel series, you do it with new characters because having a child has that in inbred, uh, innate implication that they're either going to be like the main character or it's going to be too connected to the original main character for it to truly be its own story and have its own character growth and have its own story because it's so closely connected to the original story and the original character where it can't really spread its own it wings. In to win. It undermines that core idea that this trainer could be anyone. It could be you. It's scary for things to change, but it's also okay. I also know that eventually really? Ash is gonna show up as a surprise battle for Rico towards the end of her journey because that's how Pokemon do. So. I liked how uh, Yu-Gi-Oh did it. Yu-Gi-Oh always had like a completely different main character, but sometimes, like like Matt just said, they came, brought the original main character back for a little fight. Like when Jaden fought Yugi in the original series, I thought that was cool. But the uh, the characters were so different, there was no 
expectation that they were gonna be like each other. Well, yes, I am loath to see Ash go. I'm also okay moving on. Because let's be honest, he really should have gotten with Serena or Misty the entire- Okay, Matt, that's enough of that. We don't need to give the Serena shippers any more clout or any more attention, do we? Listen, if you enjoy doing it, that's that's fine. It's just not really for me. I do think it's a little bit weird to do for 10-year-olds, though. But what's not weird to do, uh, no matter what age you are, is subscribe to more Paris. Because we're almost at 100,000 subscribers, and you should definitely do that. Thank you so much for watching.